Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation with complex numbers. Well, cosine z equals pi and we're going to solve for z. I know there's a quick and easy way to do it. z is equal to inverse cosine of pi or arc cosine of pi, right? And just an easy way out. No, that's not what we're looking for. We can arc cosine both sides and get an answer, but we want something much more tangible. Something that looks like a complex number, and we want to be able to write it as A plus BI. Make sense? Okay, let's give it a try. First of all, I want to tell you something. Cosine Z is between negative 1 and 1 inclusive if Z is real. What is that supposed to mean? Contrapositive, logic, whatever. This means, because cosine z is not less than or equal to 1 in this case, that means z is not real. Make sense? z is not real. And if you kind of look at the graph of cosine and the pi thing, you know, cosine is going to be 1 at 0, so it's going to look like this. You know, the graph of cosine is just going to repeat over and over. And our horizontal line, z equals pi, is just going to go over here. This is 1, this is pi, therefore no intersection points. Too bad, right? Okay, so what do we do? This one more time shows Z is not real. Okay, we know that it's good that we know it because if you end up with a real answer, that will be incorrect, right? Hopefully we don't. Now, let's go ahead and see how we can solve this problem and these kinds of problems. This is going to give you a general idea, hopefully. Now, Whenever you have the cosine of something equals something greater than 1, obviously, you can't just solve by a normal means. For example, if I had cosine z equals 1 half, I could then kind of set 1 half equal to the cosine of an angle that I know of. For example, in this case, that would be pi over 6. And then from here, I can say, okay, z equals pi over 6. z is also equal to negative pi over 6, so on and so forth, right? We could also add multiplication to pi. Hmm. But when the number is greater than 1, then Houston, we have a problem. So here's what we're going to do instead. Whenever we get something like this, we're going to use Euler's formulas. What is Euler's formula? Well, Euler said a while ago, which is obviously he's an amazing mathematician, right? Do you agree? Cosine z plus i sine z is the same as i to the e to the i z. And if you replace z with negative z, cosine of negative z is still, is still cosine of z because z is, I mean, not z is, cosine is even. So, but sine is odd, so we're going to have a minus sign in the front if we set it equal to e to the power negative iz, which means z was replaced with negative z because i is constant. Make sense? Okay, great. So from here, we can go ahead and add these equations up, cancel these out. 2 cosine z equals e to the iz plus e to the negative iz. Divide both sides by 2, and you're good to go. This is a well-known formula, but I just wanted to show you real quick where that comes from. I think this formula will be helpful. By the way, if you kind of understand where that comes from, it's more likely, or you are more likely to remember it. Because sometimes you memorize and you forget, and you learn, and you'll remember. Okay? Cool, cool. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to replace cosine z with that, and then set this expression equal to pi, and we're good to go. We can solve this equation for any value on the right hand side. Any value. Even complex imaginary values like i, 3 plus 4i. Isn't that amazing? Cosine can be anything. No limitations. Awesome. Now, let's go ahead and first cross multiply. Right? That's going to give us 2 pi, which is about 6.28 something, by the way. But that doesn't matter. We don't care because that's just an approximation. Who cares about the uh, calculator value, right? What is the most accurate form of pi? If somebody asks you, you know what it is? It's pi, the symbol itself. Okay, let's go ahead and write the e to the power negative iz as 1 over e to the iz. And now, doesn't this look like an equation that can be turned into a quadratic? Yes. Substitution is awesome, and we're going to use it. If you replace e to the iz with w, you get w plus 1 over w equals 2 pi. Multiply everything by w to get rid of the fractions because nobody likes fractions, right? No offense fractions, but nobody likes you. w squared plus 1 is equal to 2 pi w. Now, how do you solve this equation? Put all the things together and come up with a full quadratic, which you can solve by using the 
quadratic formula. There's a formula. I mean, come on. There's a reason why they have a formula. So you can solve all quadratic equations, even the ones with complex, imaginary, non-real solutions. Do you think this, uh, this quadratic equation is going to have non-real solutions? What are your thoughts? It might have, right? But think about it. If you had w squared minus 2w plus 1 equals 0, then w would be 1, the discriminant would be 0. When you make the b absolute value-wise bigger, then your discriminant is definitely going to be positive. Think about it, b squared minus 4ac. That's what I'm talking about. Anyways, that's a different story. Let's go ahead and solve this using the formula. w equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 4 pi squared, minus 4ac, which is 4, all over 2. Now we can pull out a 4 and then ev divide everything by 2, nicely simplifies to pi plus minus the square root of pi squared minus 1. Now this is an interesting expression because there are two solutions and I'm going to set each of them equal to, wait a minute, these are real solutions. Yes, w is real, but does that mean z is real? I mean it shouldn't be because remember the graph we looked at? z is not supposed to be real. Okay, let's find out. So, we got two values, and here's what's interesting about it. The square root of w squared minus 1. First of all, w squared minus 1 is less than w squared. Would you agree? Yes. And then square root both sides, this would also be maintained, which means, this is pi, by the way. <laughs> like hesitated for a moment. So, this means that pi is greater than this, which means their difference will be positive. Make sense? When you use the I mean, when you use the plus sign, there's no problem. But when you use the minus sign, even when you use the minus sign, you're gonna have a positive answer. In, in other words, both solutions are positive. Well, I should have known that because if you use Vieta's formulas, that it tells you the sum is positive, the product is positive. What do you expect, right? Anyways, let's go ahead and find what the z values are. So I'm gonna start with pi plus minus the square root of pi squared minus one, the plus sign first. It has the priority. And what was w? e to the power i z. Great. I should probably write it the other way around because this doesn't look right or it looks left maybe. I don't know. Maybe it looks right. <laughs> so this is w. What was w? P uh, pi plus minus, but I'm going to use the plus sign first. e to the i z is equal to that. Here's the secret. Again, we have a lot of secrets, right? Okay, but I'll reveal it to you. We have exponential on the left, but we don't have an exponential on the right. But no worries, you can always multiply by e to the power 2 pi n i, which is the complex version of 1. Yes, if you think about the argon plane, multiples of 2 pi with a modulus of 1 always, always gives you 1. Okay, that's a real number as well as a complex number, of course. But you can always multiply by that. You can always depend on e to the power 2 pi n i. Isn't that cool? Now, natural log both sides, you're going to get i z equals ln, this expression, whatever that thing is, right? The modulus, plus, because the log of a product is going to turn into a sum, 2 pi n i. Okay, great. So is that the answer? No, because we still have to divide by i. But don't divide by i. You know why? Because I never divide by, don't divide by i. Do you know why? It's like a poem, right? Or it rhymes at least. Well, here's the thing. There's a better way. Multiply by negative i instead. Okay, some people don't like it, but I like it. I hope you like it too, or you get to like it. Because negative i times i is negative i squared, and as you know, hopefully, i squared is negative 1, negative i squared is 1. So this just disappears. Isn't that cool? We end up with z. Great, awesome. And then this is also going to turn into a 1. So we're going to start with that, because that's the real part, 2 pi n. And there's going to be a minus sign here, no worries. It's just going to be minus i times ln pi plus minus, no, not just plus, never mind. Pretend I didn't say that. Z is equal to this. Hmm. Is this a complex number? Absolutely. And if you go through the same steps for the other solution, it should give you the following. Same idea, but I don't want to put you through the same trouble unless you want to go through trouble. Anyways. This basically normally brings us to the end, and I was supposed to include the solutions here, but I forgot, sorry about that. But if you go ahead and check it out with Wolfram Alpha, you should be getting the same solutions, I think. But uh, the problem with that is, check it out. Let me not tell you. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.